Well, here we are at our mock online banking site, banko.com, which is fairly representative of uh, the fundamental things you would expect to see in any online banking application. We're using a standard internet browser, Apache as the web server, which could be IIS, uh, could be WebSphere, could be Oracle's application server, really isn't relevant, and we're using MySQL as a backend database which could just as easily be Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, or even IBM DB2. We have two ways of logging in. We have an unprotected internet banking login, which will bypass webapp.secure and go directly to the web server. We also have a protected login where all traffic from the browser will be directed through webapp.secure and validated before it's allowed to pass through to the web server. We'll try the unprotected version first. We purposefully have the password field enabled so that we can see what I'm typing, as will become apparent here in just a moment. We log in. We can see the various accounts that this user has. We can see the history for any one given account. We can transfer funds from one account to another. Basically, the functionality you'd expect to see in any online banking application. And we can also search for a specific check number in the specific checking account and find out the history behind that. Now, if I'm not an authorized user of the system, in other words, I've not been given a user ID and a password, I still have a potential opportunity to gain access using an SQL injection attack where I actually modify the query that is the SQL query that is submitted to the web server. And I've just randomly been assigned Wayne Zbarth, which happened to be the first record returned by the SQL database given the mutated query that we sub submitted. Once I am in, I can poke around a little bit and look for opportunities where I might be able to become specific users. In other words, if I knew another account number, so we see what looks like an account number in the URL query string, we might try to change that to some other value and perhaps gain access to someone else's account. Now we're We've just become Alex Newman, who has a much better checking account than Wayne Zebarth did. We can look for other areas in the application where the URL query string might hold values that, if we manipulate them, would allow us to gain access as other users. And here we've manipulated a somewhat obfuscated value that's not as straightforward as an account number, but looks like it might be a user ID, which for all practical purposes, looks as though it's a primary key of a user table. If we alter that value, as we can see, we become yet a third user. Another area that we might investigate as an attacker, a web application attacker, is the use of hidden fields to transmit state data from the browser to the server. We know that we have an input field to search for the check number chances are there's some hidden field that's going to tell this web server what checking account it's using and if we alter it we might be able to gain access to that checking account. This can be done through the view source mechanism built into almost every browser. We search for a form field, a form. Find out that it's a post method and that in fact the account number is stored in the hidden field uh, that will be submitted to the web server when we hit the submit button. I can go ahead and change it using nothing more than notepad but there are much better and easier tools that are freely available on the internet that we can use to make these changes much more quickly. After we've identified that there is some hidden data that we can manipulate and perhaps gain access to other areas where we shouldn't be, we can use a freely available tool like WebSleuth, and there are other variants out there, to examine the source code, 
find the hidden field that we're interested in, make the change, update it, submit it back to the web server with our altered value, and sure enough, we can gain access to someone else's account. Yes. Notice now we're Wayne Zebarth instead of uh, Jane Smith. We're, we can try one other common exploit by altering the select option values for the from and to accounts. If we alter the HTML similar to what we did with the hidden field, perhaps we can take money from someone else's account and transfer it to ours instead of to one, from one of our accounts to another one of our accounts. Again, Sleuth is very helpful to make this very easy. And in fact, the web server is none the wiser that we made that alteration. Now we'll log back in, except this time we'll go send all traffic through webapp.secure and try some of the same exploits to see how successful we are. Try the SQL injection attack. All we get is an error logging in, which it doesn't understand our user ID and password credentials. So we're forced to log in as an authorized user. Once we're in, though, we might still have some opportunity to gain access to other people's information by looking at the query string. We can try the same exploits we used before to find that they are, in fact, rejected. We'll try the query string with the user ID again. We find that webapp.secure does recognize that the value has been altered and won't permit the transaction to go through. You can try the hidden field using Sleuth to see if maybe we can outsmart even webapp.secure. Find the hidden field. Alter it. Update it and try to submit it back to the web server. And no, it gives us a bad request. The last exploit, we'll try the funds transfer, where we're manipulating or altering the drop-down select list, similar to what we did before. And this time it won't let us because it's recognized that we have altered the values. All the application manipulation attempts that have been blocked by Web App Secure are logged to an, a well-formed XML file that tells us the origin IP address, when the event occurred, what the event was, and then what we did about it. In other words, we denied it or we filtered in the case of an SQL injection attack and what URL was being accessed at the time. We can also generate emails or send network alerts to network alerts to one or many recipients um, so people can be notified in real time when events occur.